The whole thing with Web3 blockchain gaming, uh, I'm getting my feet wet and I kind of understand what's going on, but I have a lot to learn. And when I have a lot to learn, I lean on experts. And that's why I called my friend yet again, Crypto Stash. Stash, welcome back for your third visit. What's going on, man? Hey, uh, you know, it's always really great to be here. I have a great time talking to you, man. There's, there's a lot of people that ask me to come on shows to talk about this stuff. And yours is one of my favorites. Yes. And you always say yes. So I appreciate you. And I don't, I, I only have to pay you 250000 to get on here like Gallup. That's true. That's true. I, I, I'm, a, I'm cheap, man. I come cheap. But you know what? Okay. It's not just you, Rob. It's not just you. Mm. It's also, I like your community, actually. You know, it seems like you have a, a community of very level headed, uh, open minded people who are not just a bunch of moon boys. Like they actually are intellectual. And I like that. I appreciate that. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is, well, great segue. So this is the questions. And of course, my group is just kind of getting into, we're talking about gaming. We know it's going to be big, but we know there's some pitfalls. So there's three questions for you today, young man, which I'm going to break it down to the investor, the individual, and the skeptic. So the first one with the investor, I always talk about this, but I want to hear it from the horse's mouth. Why is blockchain gaming going to lead the next crypto bull run? The next one's for the individual. Why should people play games in the first place? Because, you know, I mean, people play games. They, should they really be playing games? They're investing into it. The last one is a skeptic. What could actually derail blockchain gaming? And before we, we, we get into those, those sweet, beautiful questions that I, that I just asked, just a little, little recap of what Stash is all about. First of all, I don't know if you're into gaming, but if you're into whiskey bourbon, this guy's got your number. Also, True. I also like yes, exactly. Also, if you're into music, he's got his own band. This was a, the last uh, little session that you guys did. Pretty packed yeah. audience on a beach, I might say. Very slick. Stash. It's fun. And of course, he does some uh, things on YouTube. And I do it all, man. Look, I run the gamut, man. There's if, if you can't find something to like about me, mm -hmm. then you're just a, you're just a curmudgeon old bastard. That's what I think. <laughs> <laughs> We've got plenty of those on my channel, baby. Hey, so, well, you know, they hey. may like me too because I'm a little bit of a curmudgeon old bastard myself. <laughs> <laughs> so look, so look, you really out, baby. Let's go in. Hey, call a spade a spade. So actually, I, I like this video you did on on the top ten free mobile games. This is Rec League. I actually minted uh, an NFT for that, the two boxes. And we got a bet. And once we play this game, whoever wins has to buy shots at the next uh, Bitcoin convention. I don't know if I can Ooh. afford something like sweet like this, but I'll get you. I'll get you if I do lose. I don't think I'm going to lose. And then oh, also. Oh, man. Oh, All right. Game on. Let's that's go, what's baby. Up. I'm, that's I'm what's, ready for that. <laughs> that's what's up. Also, you did a really good review of Cornucopias built on uh, Cardano. I reached out to Josh and Rob. And those guys love you. So this was a pretty good video. And then the last video we did, actually the one we did a year ago, we did, you know we had 119,000 views? Yeah, I mean, it, you know what it is? I attribute it to how ridiculously good looking I am and this amazing mustache. But I mean, you were there too. I you was. Too. So, I mean, I, I guess there's you get credit. Yeah. You could call me the side action, but whatever. And actually, <laughs> actually you live in infamy in my 100% free website, Dan Teaches Crypto. You're right below Yatsu, the founder of Animoca Brands. For, That's about where I belong here. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, Stash, <laughs> let's get to it. Talk to us, the people who are learning about blockchain gaming. Why is this going to be the next next uh, big thing in crypto? Because we hear it a lot. And uh, I have my thesis, but what do you got, man? Blockchain gaming being the like the big thing here in this board. Like, why is it going to be? Why is it going to lead the way? Everyone keep. You're right. This is a great question. People ask this all the time because you see people talking about that and saying it all the time. Right. But maybe they don't really explain it. They'll say, "Oh, you know, I don't get it." Uh, but really, what it comes down to is when you look at the technology and the way that it can interact with existing things that we like in our life. Okay. Uh, NFTs and blockchain technology are particularly aligned with gaming and game development. Um, number one, gamers are already familiar with digital assets. Most people like, like th that's one of the biggest ones, right? So when you talk about why, because most people today, they don't value digital anything that when you say digital something, they, they don't, there's no value to them. So you can say, Oh, I have this digital one. And, and they're like, that, that, that's just, it's, no, there's no value there. No one cares. But you understand, but the gamers understand that digital items do have value and that they can be valuable. And uh, I think that that is one of the easiest ways to be able to transition people from what we have now, the systems we currently have, into using blockchain technology and NFTs 
and gaming is the most right for that. Like there's there's enough there's enough use cases there and enough um, we'll say user uh, the term for like I, 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 and and I, I, and as much as gamers right now are like no NFTs are a scam, they still understand that digital assets have value. You see these CS:GO skins being traded for hundreds of thousands of dollars, mm -hmm. and, and really, you know, an NFT is not that much different. It's just the system that is tracking these things is more transparent, a little bit more open, and that is a system I think a lot of people can appreciate, and gamers in particular. So that's that's number one. I would say that's the biggest thing is because gamers understand that digital assets have value. Okay, so with that one, I will say like this. This is this is a question that I, I posed in my community. And I said, when we took a look at ownership, when we take a look at physical ownership, and this is what I, I got this, this idea from Yatsu, from, uh, from Anamoka Brands. We've been conditioned for so long for physical ownership, like movies, music, and games, right? Remember those days when we had like VHS and DVD? You own that. Music, tapes, it's and It's in CD. my hand. It's in my hand. I own it. Games. And it was, it was a foregone conclusion that you actually own that. But once we got into the digital part, it seems like it just kind of went away. Like movies, yeah. no one owns movies anymore. No one's got a big DVD collection. Music, yeah, it's all on Google Play and Apple. And then the games are, you know, you, you, you could be Fortnite. You could be Google Play, Apple Play, App Store. But that's like, that's like the, the mobile game. So like when we talk about these things as far as like uh, what we just said, the actual digital version, we should be able to, con to have that ownership and do what we want. But I will say... And, and, and some of my brothers ask me, they go, but Rob, you don't understand because like there's some things that we don't own and it's just easier for us. Like some people, some people say, I don't want to own a car. I want to lease a car because it's just easier to do that. And some people would say, you know what? I don't want to deal with like buying CDs sure. or DVDs anymore. I can just stream it. And right, I mean, you know right, what? Right. That's a great point for those people. It works out great. But I think for other people who want to own things and have in their possession mm -hmm. and say, I want digital ownership. And it's what George Washington actually talked about. He said, without ownership, there is no freedoms. So like when yes. you talk about right. these things, like I get it, but it's just hard for people to understand because for so long, digital property, we have no ownership of that. Right. That's just for the right. centralized players. Well, but shouldn't we have the option? That's, should that's we not it. have the option? Like, okay, okay. Is it easier to have Spotify instead of curating your own like personal MP3 collection? Of course it can be easier. I actually appreciate doing that though. Yeah. Uh, and so I want the option. I think we should have the option. We, you shouldn't say, okay, now that everything's digital, we're taking all that ownership back from you guys. You get nothing and you're going to love it. And I'm not a big fan of that. I'm not, a big, I'm not fan. a big fan of that. So, I mean, maybe some people are, a lot of people are, but I think the people who, who understand, you know, this technology can benefit them. And that's, and in gaming, I think that's a lot of those people when they really understand the power that NFTs and blockchain technology can bring to game development. It's just another tool on top of what we already have, like great tools like Unreal Engine or Unity. Or, you know, what, what we're seeing right now with AI being incorporated into games like higher level AI, not just the basics we've been dealing with for many years here in gaming. Exactly. So, so like, so we're, we're in agreement here. People can do what they want. There's this other subsect of, they say, you know, I want to do this, but there's other people that we get the option. We mm -hmm. can kind of dictate where things are going and like, say like, like a DAO or a gaming guild and kind of move from that. You can take those NFTs, you can rent them out, you can sell them, you can push them out, you can stake them, whatever you want, or not stake them, but you can actually do those things. I think that's the more important thing. So great. So we, we understand that this is potentially could lead it for the next piece. Now let's get into this part. Whoa, 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 whoa. I had a number two for that oh, one. This, sorry, I'll make this sorry. one short. I'll make this one yeah. short. The no, no, second no, no, no. Part keep that, going, Stash. Keep going, Stash. The second part of that, right, of why is gaming going to lead the next crypto bull run it's because of timing and, and, and game development cycles, right? So in this mm -hmm. last bull run, there were no games really at a point uh, that were really good enough to say, oh man, this is an amazing game that, that people outside of Web3, outside of crypto would want to play. But we are fast approaching the day here when a bull run is going to return. And there are many, many games that have been in development for the last two, three, four years sure. that are going to be launching around the time this next bull run hits in 2024 maybe going into early 2025 depending on where we see the cycle and if we're going to see a little bit of a of a lag like we usually do after the happening about a year or so later is when we really start to, you know traditionally see that run up but uh, you know there'll be some hype cycle before the happening of course too but that is the other one it is this there's the cycle the timing of this is just it's working out really perfect yeah and you know what that would be back to that rec league 
uh, we just took a look at. That's yeah. that's coming out, I think, in a three weeks, right? Two or three weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Launching. Yeah, the first iteration. Yep, the very first playable, uh, you know, iteration of that game is going to be out here in just a few weeks. Yeah, and another good thing I like about that is it's it's going to be free to play on a mobile. But if you want to do the NFT thing, see, it's like the best of both worlds. It marries yeah. it. And then, like, I see stuff like this. I saw you play this game, My Pet Hooligan. I asked you about this one. Yeah, this one fun. looks super fun, and it's almost ready to go. And this is like. It is. Would you, yeah. would, you, would you say this is like a triple A type game? Oh, yeah, 100%, like, man. I mean, when you talk about the level of graphics and gameplay, and like when you say, well, what is triple A? Mm-hmm. AMGI Studios, the developers of My Pet Hooligan, are right there. I mean, these guys are doing next level stuff. They're not just developing a game, they're de- developing a whole IP. They have a movie. That is, that is they're working on right now too a, a full length feature film animated movie you know these guys are in hollywood man these guys are not messing around dude i've been to their motion capture studio i've seen their entire operation uh it's going to be fun everything they're doing is is, is top tier man it really is uh, and, and to boot it is a fun game that everybody can play i mean i could see you know uh, young kids playing this too you know my, my 13 year i could see her jumping in this you know i could see tons of young, younger kids playing this game too so appeals to a wide audience which i love I can see that. And everybody, I know everybody's like, what? Tell me more. I will link all these things that me and Stash are talking about. And of course, Stash's channel where if you're going to want to get some really good alpha for that type of stuff, go over to his channel and check it out. Okay, Stash, before I move on, did did we miss anything on on that piece before I move on to the individual? I think those are the two biggest things. When you really want to know why crypto gaming will lead the next bull run, I think those are the two biggest factors of why it's going to lead. There's other things in and out there, you know, the smaller stuff, but those are the two big ones. Okay. So you talked about your 13 year old daughter and about people playing. So this will go to the individual because I personally believe that everybody should, if you're going to invest in something, you should know as much about it as you possibly can. 100%. So as far as the individual goes, people watching this video right now, besides what I talked about, why should people play games in the first place? Is there any other good reason besides just knowing it or you got something else? It's a great question, Rob. You know, uh, I'm going to answer that in another two-parter. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, you know, okay, look, look, look. What are <laughs> Number one, you know, should you play games? I mean, uh, you know, they're fun. Sure, why not? I think, I think a lot of people play games in one respect or another. You know, there's a very large spectrum of what gaming is. But the biggest one really is like, well, you know, should, why should they do it? You know, if you are, I mean, I, hey, have you, okay, All right, we're going to roll back. Well, do, you, right. I, oh, yeah, do your own research. I'm sure you tell your, your 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 people this all the time. As much as it's great to listen to Rob's opinion and to my opinion, talking about the coins, talking about what's going on in the industry, you still want to do your own research, right? Right. And if you're not, I'm sorry, but you should be. And so this is part of that, right? When you talk about doing research on an investment opportunity, if you were doing research on any other type of investment vehicle, you would be you fully committed to doing that. And if you're looking to invest in gaming, Playing the actual game or being, you know, checking out the community is actually going to benefit you and give you that insight that most people who are not doing that are going to get. And so that gives you an advantage, right? You think about that. It's giving you, give you, it will give you an advantage over the people who are too lazy to jump in and, and find out if that game is actually good or if it has potential versus just listening to a bunch of talking heads on Twitter and on YouTube who are farming your engagement for those sweet, sweet Elon daddy uh, you know, uh, ad revenues. So, you know, yeah. I, I, okay. I perfect. So perfect. So like, there's that, I always see it like this, like, you got to know, you got to be into it. Cause if not, you're just going to say, Oh, well, someone said it, someone to buy it. And then of course, like, where'd all my money go? And then the other big thing is like, like you got kids, my kids are growing up when they were growing up. Like it's a way to connect with, with your kids in all honesty. Sure. Oh yeah. yeah. A lot of, so like a lot of people on my channel, statistically you're looking at between 30 and 55 years old. So if you got kids or grandkids, and you're like, well, I want to flip, find a way to connect. There's one reason. The second reason is, of course, the big reason what, what Stash talked about. The other one is connection. And the third thing is, like, just do it, like, as far as, like, games go. Why well, my wife does it. She plays this game on Pogo.com. It's 100% free. And there's another one called Crazy Games. 22 million users per month. Those guys are raking it in. And the reason yeah. is, is because it's just a way to de-stress. I don't know what about you, Stash. But I got a little stress in my life. And the people that are out there watching this video right now, maybe instead of worrying about drawing, you know, lines and saying, you know, is there a resistance here or the RSI, maybe just play a game every so often just to just to relax. I'm right there with you, man. Uh, you know, gaming can be stressful sometimes depending on what level you're playing at. But in general, I think most people enjoy games to, to yeah, de-stress, have fun, not, not have to be inside their own headspace. You're thinking about the game and not thinking about all the crazy things going on around you. And so, yeah, I think that there's there's multiple great reasons. Uh, yeah. You know, 
you're, when you're when you split it out, yeah, it's like when it comes down to well, as the investor, right? Well, what's the reason? Well, it's because you're going to get that advantage as just an individual. Why should you do it? Yeah, I mean, I think you're right. Great connections with 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 kids or or, or friends too. Even you know, you can say, hey, uh, it, maybe I haven't seen my buddy. He lives far. We can't hang out that often, but we could game together and hang out together and talk about those things. And uh, I think that's a great way too. Yeah. See, and there's, and let me just preface it with this. There's a huge difference between the games that, that stash is going to, is going to rule and, and play and like some games, like I'm going to play. And that's, what's great about this, this, this uh, community. There's all different types of it. If you want to do casual, hyper casual, triple A rank games and like super stuff, it all depends on what you want to do. Or if you're looking for de-stress, just follow stash. and It'll tell you like the right things to drink. So the last thing, the last question then, Stash, I know you got to get out of here. Got a nice little vacation coming up. The mm. skeptic. We talk about the good stuff. We talk about why and the what. Last one, what could derail this? Because let's be honest, nothing's guaranteed. So what could derail blockchain gaming from really leading off into the next crypto bull run? All right, let me tell you something. Hold on. Let me tell you something. Look, Rob, you're wrong. Guaranteed. <laughs> guaranteed. <laughs> All right, plan B. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, could something derail it, uh, yeah. you know, possibly, but not for long. That's the thing, right? Sure, we've been derailed a bunch of times. Um, you know, when you talk about the overall sentiment that traditional mainstream gaming has for NFTs uh, is not very good. We got derailed by that, man. That was a that was a big that was a big thing because, you know, um, once once there's kind of a in the gaming community, once there's kind of a, 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 an idea established a lot mm -hmm. of people just kind of pick up on it. They don't. They don't care. They don't do research. You know, they're they're not like what we're doing. We're researching things. They just are gamers, and they'll pick up on the same talking points and like NFT bad. It's all a scam. And I'm like, yeah, you said that about free to play. You said that about subscription model. You said oh, really? that about loot boxes. You said that. You know what I'm saying? I can keep going, man. Like you know. And so they've said it every single time. Um, so yeah. could we get derailed? Of course we could. I mean, I think one of the biggest ones is, is a pushback from retail investors. You know, mainstream, uh, not investor, but retail gamers. Yeah, uh, mainstream that pushback, right? Um, you know, and, and other setbacks. Uh, anytime we see something large scale like a hack, where someone has lost a bunch of money or lost these assets, um, I think that's a, um, a very real, a, re a very real setback that could be out there. Um, other than that, I really don't see. I mean, regulation obviously could be one, but I don't feel like regulators are really looking at this industry with that kind of magnifying glass at this point. They may be in the future, in particular when it comes to things like loot boxes, but we're already seeing, you know, this technology being accepted more and more every single day. I got. But there, there, there are chances. It just it, it won't derail for long. No, and it, well, it's just like crypto is inev inevitable. Crypto and blockchain is inevitable. And then just to to speak on the last thing you just talked about, you know, is like as far as gaming, for there's a project that's going to be launching in the United States. And this will be September 12th. And we already talked about this channel, but I talked to them. I'm not going to name them individually, but I said, are you guys sure you want to bring this to America? Because they launched it globally, did really well. Because mm -hmm. with Gary Gensler, he goes, look, he goes, our legal counsel says like this, in 2024, 2025, we don't, we're not sure. We don't think that the, that the current administration is going to be there. And even if they are, the SEC is looking at it like this. Exchanges are up here. They're going to crack down on them. Then it's going to go to centralized exchanges. And they got to go through all that stuff to get to the projects. And then our project yeah. is way down here because it actually has utility. So for gaming, it's actually like utility tokens that actually do things as opposed to some of the other ones that I really can't speak for. So to me, I right. can, I see you right on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, you know, the regulation, I think that's a far off thing. I mean, in general, they're, you know, sweeping regulation for the entire industry is one thing, you know. Mm. And we've seen a lot of, of, of tumultuous <laughs> decisions being made here <laughs> over, the, over the last year. I mean, it's just been, it's been nuts, man. You know, it's been nuts. Uh, but gaming has been unfazed. You look at some of the, the big winners here, even over the last month or a couple months here, gaming also counter trades uh, a, some, a lot of times the, what's going on in the market. And I think we'll continue to see more of a decoupling of gaming projects from the general crypto narrative, right? Where if something dumb, everything is dumb. I mean, not, the, not you know, like we saw uh, what was last week when everyone's like, Elon's selling his Bitcoin and Evergrande, they're going under and they wow. found every, they dump everything, right? I mean, e even during that, you know, we'll see gaming products, you know, maybe not dump as hard. Uh, but also, I think we could see a decorrelation there, uh, you know, coming in the future, too, man. Just because of the fact that, um, you know, gamers don't care about a bear market in general. I mean, you know, for the most part, gamers don't. The people who are, 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 are gamers and financially focused, like myself and some others, uh, you know, that may be a factor. 
But for the most part, man, gamers just want to play and make game and make games, hang out with their friends, play fun games. And that doesn't really, you know, in particular in downtimes, they probably actually game more. You know, during COVID, we saw this a massive increase in gaming across the board globally. So, you know, uh, I, I do think that uh, whereas there, there could be some pitfalls, I think that what we have set in motion here uh, is big enough to weather those storms over time. Excellent response. See, Stash, this is why I have you on. Fantastic. I love it. So everybody, so as you know, you can find Stash. There's a link in the description. Check out his videos. There's, every, there's a video for everybody about how to learn about Web3, blockchain gaming, the different games that are out there, and just the nuts and bolts behind it. So Stash, I can't thank you enough. I appreciate you just coming on. Always. You know, like I said, I, I love hanging out with you, take, uh, taking some time to to just really, you know, dive into the the uh, you know crypto gaming scene and, and give you a little bit of a of a taste of, of what I'm I'm de- I, I do this every day. This is this is what I focus on every single day. So, like Rob said, if you guys, uh, if there, you know, whatever, 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 you're, what you're looking for, I got a little something there, right? Some uh, for the people who are more gamers, I got more of that. We're hanging out, we're doing live streams. If you're looking for more technical stuff, I'm, t- you know, I'm talking about, uh, you know, the top coins that, that are going to be good. As a matter of fact, after I get back from vacation, I got a video coming out of like my top 20 uh, gaming focused tokens to be looking out for for this next bull run that I think are going to be big. So that's going to be uh, it's going to be a hot one. Awesome. I will be watching that. So everybody, that's it for today. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. Everything that we and Stash talk about is time sensitive. Well, that's it for today. We appreciate you and we'll see you guys on the next one.